uh, <clears throat> some, some more practice syllogisms for you. It's from a PDF file that I'll be sending uh, your way. Uh, uh, well, let's get started. Uh, number one on my list reads this way. Beers that are Russian imperial stouts are high in alcohol content. Second premise says Guinness stout is a low alcohol stout. So, Guinness stout must not be a Russian imperial stout. And by the way, there are no product endorsements here. They just happen to be there. Let me write this one out for you. Example number one. Beers that are Russian, Imperial, yeah, it's getting long, isn't it? Stats are high in alcohol content. My second premise was Guinness Stout, trademark, is a low alcohol stout. Therefore, Guinness Stout must not be a Russian <coughs> Imperial Stout. Now remember, you're not supposed to get mired in what? Words. Don't get mired in the words. We're going to look at the structure here. So let's get rid of all this beer talk. This should look something like, by the way, beers that are Russian Imperial stouts are high in alcohol content. What kind of statement do you think that best translates to? An A statement. When in doubt, try to use universal premises when you can. They are so much easier to work with than particulars. So our first statement will, will be, all beers that are Russian Imperial Stouts, we can call that R, are H for high in alcohol content. Our second premise can read, uh, <clears throat> Guinness Stout is a low alcohol stout. This one is tricky, folks. Because you'll note these, these look like two different terms, but they're technically not. Yeah, this is going to be an E statement. It's going to be no beer that is Guinness Stout are beers that are high alcohol content. Now let me read it again. It says Guinness Stout is a low alcohol stout. You'll notice the, uh, the term up here was high in alcohol. When we said that this one was low in alcohol, it's the same term but opposite truth value. So this becomes an E statement. No GR high alcohol content beers. Now, this was a lesson I wanted to show you, mainly because sometimes when the terms might not seem to line up, they actually do line up if you do some translating. Now my conclusion is Guinness Stout must not be a Russian Imperial Stout. That will be no beer that is G, no G, R, R for Russian Imperial Stouts. Now this one is an A, E, E, 2 syllogism because you'll see our middle term is the predicate of the major and minor premise. Now how would we diagram this one? Let's draw our circles on the board. They're a little lopsided, I apologize. Our upper left hand corner will make R, our uh, Upper uh, right hand will be H, and then our lower circle will be G. All R or H, we would shade in 1 and 4. Check that off is done. Now, how am I going to deal with the statement no G or H? We do this in another color. Thank you. Shading in 
5 and 6 represents no GRH. Now, to determine if it's valid or not, we take a look at our conclusion. It says no GRR. Has no GRR been diagrammed? <coughs> The answer to that question is yes, no GRR has been diagrammed. This one is valid. No GRR has been diagrammed. Because 4 and 5 are shaded. And 4 and 5 is the sector that represents uh, no G or R. Now, folks, uh, we can double check our work by looking at the rules method. Now, you'll notice that we have a negation as one of our, uh, rather as our conclusion, excuse me. So then to pass the rule, one of our premises has to be a negation. So negation rule so our negation rule checks out. Now, distribution. Our middle term has to be distributed. The middle term is the predicate of an E statement. And E statements distribute both terms. So we've got a distributed middle. Now this one is slightly trickier. Our conclusion is an E statement, so both of the terms distribute. Therefore, both the subject and the predicate of the conclusion have to distribute in their corresponding premise. But no matter for that, R, which is the predicate of the conclusion, distributes in its corresponding premise as the subject of an A statement. And G, which is the subject of an E statement in the conclusion, distributes as the subject of an E statement in, the, in its corresponding premise. So uh, the rules method entirely checks out. This one turns out to be valid. We demonstrated that it was valid by rules method. And over here, we demonstrated that it's valid via the uh, Venn diagramming method.